We're in the circle. <laughs> the circle of brownies. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to Crumbs and Corkscrews, whether you're joining us on the YouTube channel or the Facebook page. Here is where I aim to help you on your baking adventures, whether you're a complete beginner or you just are looking for some new ideas. I'm here to give you deliciously easy dessert recipes, tips, tricks, recommendations, um, and generally have a chat. This is our first live stream of Kitchen Live of Series 2 for 2021. And today, as you can see, oh, that way, <laughs> we're doing a raspberry Oreo brownies. So we're going to be starting in a moment. If you're out there, why don't you pop a hello in the comments, let me know where you're joining from. If you're watching this on live, if you're watching the England Denmark football match, then as well as watching this, then let me know. If you are not watching it and you're not interested, don't worry. This is a totally football free zone for me. I, I'm not a football person, but you know, let's see if they win. <laughs> but we'll be getting started in just a few minutes. And we're just going to be going off really nice and easy today. Raspberry Oreo brownies. We're going to be talking about our top tips for our, and my secrets for brownies. And hopefully um, you're going to really love these and want to give them a go as well. So, yeah, we're nearly there. <laughs> Um, as always, if you've got any questions during the live stream, if you pop them in the comments, I will see it and I will try and answer them as we're going along. Um, or you, I'll, if I can't answer them at that moment, I'll answer them when we're finished and I will be posting full information as well as measurements and full ingredients at the end of the stream. So it's been a while. We let, let's let's get going according to to this. So. Yeah, we're back in the kitchen. I've had all sorts of uh, sunlight dramas this evening, trying to get ready. I've had blinds down, things blocking out sun, and then when I came downstairs, um, it's gone grey and raining again. <laughs> it's been one of them days, so it's either been really heavy rain, or really bright sun and really warm, but it's really warm in here as well. Uh, but not to worry, it's, it's going to get warmer when we put the oven on. <laughs> <laughs> so let's jump into our first recipe of the uh, shimmy into summer uh, kitchen live series and like I said we're going to be making raspberry oreo brownies now this recipe that I'm going to make makes around 12 um, probably about 12 portions nine portions if you want really big pieces 12 portions if you're feeling generous to uh, share them with everybody and it depends really what size pan you're making them in and we'll be talking about those when we look at our equipment shortly but this brownie recipe I made this absolutely years ago as you can see the picture here is it's in my old kitchen it was taken with a hammer <laughs> phone and uh, I didn't get any of the final ones so that's it before it goes into bake and I haven't made these for so long, and the Oreos were on offer on the online shop, and I thought, oh, let's get some fresh raspberries and Oreos, and we'll make them. So that's how I thought, we'll do these again. We'll, we'll get stuck in with these. Now, this brownie mixture is really rich. It's devilishly rich. We're going to go um, in with a dark muscovado sugar, as well as a little bit of caster sugar there, so you get those caramelly, um, chocolatey vibes going on and it is my go-to brownie recipe but I can tweak it depending on what sugars I use what um, what chocolate I use um, I'm gonna stuff these like I said with everybody's favorite Oreos but you if you don't want to use Oreos you don't have to you could you could use any biscuit or cookie really but the Oreos and the chocolate go really well with the raspberries and the beauty of this is beside the fact I've got everything in bowls, we're going to mix it all just in one bowl. Um, I'm going to use a handheld mixer, but you don't even have to do that. You can use just a balloon whisk instead. And that, that's the beauty of that is there's less washing up, but you can just pop your bowl in the dishwasher or wash it up and, and you're, you're done with. And the whole... The whole
sorry about that. And our whole recipe is less than an hour from start to finish. You do want to let the brownies cool though and firm up before you cook, uh, before you cut them. And we'll talk about that when we talk about those top tips later on. But yeah, start to finish, less than an hour. So let's take a look at all these ingredients then that we've got down here. So uh, you've got, I've, got I've, I've switched things around so they're on different sides. So we've got our ingredients on our equipment list and these will all be in the blog post as well as my recommendations and all the information which I will link to below um, after the live stream. But for our ingredients, they're very simple. We're going to start with an unsalted butter, um, add a pinch of sea salt if you want to and or if you prefer, you can use a slightly salted butter that helps bring out the flavor and the creaminess of the butter. This is room temperature. Um, you can do it straight from the fridge for this one because we're going to melt this. And we're gonna melt our butter, so that's 200 grams, and you want equal quantity then of chocolate. And um, we're using a, just a, a regular supermarket Belgian chocolate. This is dark Belgian chocolate that we're gonna break up into pieces and pop in with our butter. If you prefer, you can use um, a milk chocolate or a mix of dark and milk chocolate, which I do with some of my recipes, like my Rolo brownies. That just helps give different depths of flavors because the cookies are, the, are quite intense with their cocoa flavor. That's why I'm going for the Belgian chocolate here, the dark Belgian chocolate. That said, then you want two sugars. Now, I've got listed here 350 grams of caster sugar, but as I was getting my ingredients out, I thought I've tested this a few times with this combination. I'm going to go in with this today. So we've got collectively 350 grams of sugar, but I've split it. So I've got 200 grams of a dark muscovado sugar. Now, the soft brown sugars, the light soft brown sugar, or dark soft brown sugar, or muscovado sugar, gives, helps, is quite uh, moist, so it helps keep your brownies really nice and moist, stops them getting cakey, um, helps keep that uh, fudgy gooiness that we're looking for, rather than them becoming solid. But I don't want to use all of my sugar with this because it can become a little bit overpowering. So I split that to the 200 grams for the dark, and then the other 150 grams, I'm just using a caster sugar. This is a golden caster sugar, but you can use a regular white uh, caster sugar or a super fine sugar. And uh, the, the dark will give us this little bit of a caramelly taste. And if you, if you pop onto the channel and the playlist under the baking basics for beginners, you'll find out all, I've, I've just published a post with top 10 essential baking ingredients, and you'll find all the information about the different sugars and why I try and use the different ones over on there. So that's our sugars. There we go. We've also then got four medium free range eggs and these are at room temperature. Now I say it all the time and I know you guys are gonna go, yes, we know, we know. But if your eggs are at room temperature, that's so much better if you're baking, it's easier to whisk them up. Uh, they whisk up better, which incorporates that air, which gives you lift on your bait. Um, and especially as we're not using any raising agent here, the eggs will, the air in the eggs will help with that and do a lot of the work for us. But also when you pop your eggs and your mixture into the oven, because if you keep these in the fridge, they're quite cool. So when you pop everything together and pop it into the oven, the first part of that bake is actually the oven working to get all our ingredients up to temperature. And if everything else is at room temperature, which is what you normally do, you've normally got your sugars and your flours and, and cocoa powders all, all at room temperature, then they're sort of waiting for the eggs to join the party, so to speak, and get up to temp so they can start baking and having all those lovely reactions in the oven. So having these at room temperature is, is critical. Um, if you forget, don't worry, just get them out, leave them on the kitchen counter for about 10 to 15 minutes and they'll start to come up 
If they're really cool, just get a bowl of uh, lukewarm tap water and pop them in for a few minutes and your eggs will come up to temperature then. So that's your eggs for medium eggs. And for your flour then, we're using just a plain or all-purpose flour. We're not using a self-raising flour here. We're not adding any raising agents like baking soda or baking powder because we don't want to take the texture. We want them to be um, nice and um, sort of not dense, <laughs> but we want them to be nice and, and, and flat and and not puffed up or, or cakey in texture. So we're using um, 120 grams of plain or all-purpose flour. And then we also have our Oreo, um, sorry, our cocoa powder. And this is just 50 grams of a regular unsweetened cocoa powder. Now I'm just using a regular cocoa powder, but um, if you've been on before, you'll know that I also like the intense, the really dark, intense cocoa powder that's in our Oreos. Um, but we don't want to go too deep and too dark by having the Oreos and the intense cocoa powder. So that's why I'm sticking with the regular cocoa powder. Hello, Gina. Good, uh, good, good afternoon. Good evening. <laughs> it's been one of those busy days. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, so, yeah, good evening. Uh, you've uh, escaped football. <laughs> um, lastly, then, we have our Oreo cookies. We're going to use uh, about a pack of these. These came in twin packs. These were on offer. Um, there's 28 in here. So it's about 14 in a sleeve. And we'll probably use one sleeve for uh, the recipe, but you can put as many in there as you like. I also picked up uh, some of these Oreo bites, which are little Cadbury, uh, like little fingers that are full of the Oreo stuffing, cream and uh, Oreo crumbs. So I might use those from the top. And then of course it's uh, Oreo raspberries. So we've got raspberries as well. And these are fresh ones. Um, I don't want to use frozen ones for this. If I use frozen ones, I'll be adding liquid into this. So um, I don't necessarily want to do that um, as they thaw out when they're baking. Um, but you could use threes, threes dried raspberries as well. But fresh ones actually are probably better for this. You're going you're gonna to stud the brownies with that and add those in. So that's your ingredients. Then onto our equipment, also very, very simple. Um, I've already said you're going to need one large mixing bowl, and we've got one of those. Uh, I'll come back to the brown pans in a moment. You're also going to want a mixer of some form. I'm just going to be using a handheld mixer. You can use a balloon whisk if you prefer, or you could also use a stand mixer. But for this, I just I can't be bothered to get the KitchenAid out, to be quite honest, and the hand mixer's just easier. <laughs> Uh, you may want a few small mixing bowls just for when we're melting stuff in the microwave um, and utensils like a palette knife uh, just to smooth everything over, some rubber spatula spoons and we're going to need some baking parchment as well. But onto our baking pans then, with all sorts of different sizes, I'm actually going to be making these today in a 9 inch square cake pan. Now you don't have to. Um, I just want some big, chunky, thick pieces. So that's why I'm going with that today. So whatever you do, make sure it's got nice, um, it's got at least high-ish sides. So when your brownie bakes, it doesn't go everywhere. So I'm gonna be doing it in that. But you can also use just a, a regular, this is one of my very old brownie pans. This is a, I think it's like 13 by seven brownie pan. Um, or you can use a slightly bigger one. Uh, this is 10, I think, by some, I can't remember. I'll, I'll pop the sizes up. But if you're using something like this, you're going to get a wider spread of your brownies. So they're going to be thinner compared to something like this, which is, if you put the two together, you'll see it's a lot smaller. So you'll get thicker brownies. Um, and that is sort of the deal with the, the nine inch square pan as well. I've also got a baking sheet and I'm just going to stand my pan on there in the oven just 
I had a I had a, a moment when things spilled out the other week, so I'm probably a little bit nervous about that still. Uh, but that's our pans. Um, for your paper then, for your baking parchment, we're just going to be using a little bit of grease proof and we don't need any cake release or anything like that. We're going to just cut that um, with that and we'll do that later. So I guess, I guess we should get cracking because <laughs> we've gone through everything. I'm just going to move my notes. Um, I started with my notes ready uh, and then we'll get started so if you're making this at home and you want to do everything um, together what you want to be doing is preheating your oven I'll do mine shortly when we get around to that but you want to be preheating it to about 180 degrees C 350 Fahrenheit um, and that's that's all you need to do on your oven for the moment but the first things first because we want to melt this and let it start to cool down is we're going to melt our chocolate and our butter. So in, you can do this over a double boiler, a pan of water on the hob like I used to, but now we have the microwave in the new house, so much easier. Um, but we're gonna pop this into the microwave. So I've got my butter here, 200 grams of butter in a microwave proof bowl, and then 200 grams, like I said, of the dark chocolate. Now you can use cooking chocolate if you prefer, I just, the taste of um, uh, regular chocolate for um, for baking. It is just that it has just a little bit of extra sugar, but it's not enough that it's going to destroy your baking or anything. So we're just gonna break that. It's got these funny shapes on it. They do this now with chocolate. It's not just broken into squares. It's broken into shapes. <laughs> um, should have done this before. And they say you can use any chocolate, you can use a mix of dark and milk if you want to, rather than just all dark chocolate. But we're going. And the other reason for using regular chocolate is that I can eat it. <laughs> um, as well and also it tends to be a little bit uh, cheaper it depends and I don't really have a brand that I sort of say yes that's the one I always use when I'm baking because it depends what's off on offer in the supermarket to be quite honest so um, or where I'm shopping and, and things like that so let's just get that so I'm going to pop this then my butter and my uh, chocolate into the microwave in 30 second blast now when it's in the microwave, we don't want it to overcook or seize because then our chocolate will go grainy and we won't get a nice smooth texture. So doing it in 30, 40 second blast will help you gauge how that looks um, and stop it from seizing. So let's pop that in now. And we want to take that to a point where it's nearly melted. And the reason being is that will help our chocolate, help us stop our chocolate seizing. And that residual heat that's already in there will melt the chocolate, will finish melting off. You don't need to take it to the absolute point that it's completely melted. So whilst that's in there, and we'll check back on it, in it when it pings in about 30 seconds, uh, you want to grab a large mixing bowl. And in here then, we're going to go in with our sugars and we're going to whisk up with our eggs. So like I say, we're using a dark muscovado sugar. There's the microwave. I'm just going to pop that in there for the moment. That's not quite that. So I can tell that quite easily. Let's go with that. So yes, we're using a dark muscovado sugar. This is going to give us a rich caramelly texture, which will go with the Oreos. Um, the muscovados, the soft brown sugars, are quite moist and soft, so it helps our um, brownies stay nice and fudgy rather than going all dense and cakey. Um, and we're using 350 grams in total. So we've got 200, 
200 of the dark muscarello and I'm also using 150 grams of golden or just regular caster sugar as well. If you don't want to use dark brown sugar or you can't get hold of it, by all means you can use regular caster sugar just for the full amount there. It doesn't, it won't alter it. I just find that the different sugars help give lots of different textures to your um, and flavours to brownies. Let's have a look again at those. I'm just going to grab that out and give it a stir. Just put it on that back there. So just with a, a rubber spatula or something, you can stir through. Actually, that's probably okay. Let's just bring that over. So this has melted quite easily. So that was two lots of 30, 40 second blasts and it was almost melted. So I'm just now stirring it through the butter, the residual heat from the butter will finish melting our chocolate there. So, and we're going to leave this just to start to cool a little bit. If, we, if you do this before, if you do this after you've whisked your eggs up and then add it straight away, the heat from the chocolate and the butter will start to cook your eggs and we don't want scrambled eggs. So as you can see, just as I've stirred that through now, it's gone to a nice melted chocolate state. So that's warm. So I'm just going to pop that to one side for the moment. I'm a bigger kitchen, but I never seem to be able to find enough room for everything to go. Let's pop them there. So we've got our sugars, our caster sugar and our soft brown sugar. And then we're going to go in with our eggs as well. And we've got four medium eggs at room temperature, like I said. And you can add these all. I'm just trying to find a pot to put the eggshells in. You can add these all. Yes. I've got eggy hands at the moment, so I can't show your comment up, but not a chocolate scrambled eggs does not sound very nice, does it? <laughs> Unless they're chocolate scrambled Easter eggs, you know, the ones that are chocolate that look like scrambled eggs. Mind you, that's probably even very pleasant looking <laughs> Let's just get rid of those. I've got some water from my hands. And so I've got in here then my sugar and my eggs. You can do this with a balloon whisk, the stand mixer. I'm just going to go in with the handheld mixer here. Start on, oops. Start on low, so this has got a low, low settings already quite healthy. What you will find sometimes with dark brown sugar or soft brown sugar is that when it's in the packet it's clumped together. That's because it's moist. So you might find that as you whisk up, you need to stop. So if you heard that, dark brown sugar, soft brown sugar, soft sugars will tend to clump because uh, of the moisture. So you might find that as you're whizzing up, you need just to, I, can, I saw a few lumps in there. I'm just going to give them a, a bash down. But we're looking, like you can see, we're looking for this lovely caramelly um, mix there. Let's give it a whisk again. And then just gonna finish with just a brief moment of time. And as you whisk up that air, you'll see when you whisk eggs, it will incorporate and getting that air and that thick, frothy texture to whisk off those last bits. That's why it's important for us to have our eggs at room temperature. Just going to get rid of those. 
It's Wednesday night, Ian is out cycling, so there is no licking the ball for him. <laughs> so we've got our whizzed up eggs and sugar, and in that process, our chocolate is still probably a little too warm for my liking. So that's fine for the moment. What we'll do is we'll line our baking pan. I'm just giving that chocolate a few moments to cool a little bit. So regardless of what pan size you're using, if you're using a rectangle one or a square one, the process is the same. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put two sheets, uh, pieces of paper in, one this way, one width ways, one well, I don't know, they're both the same, aren't they? One this way and one that way, and we're going to place them on top of each other, which means we'll be able to easily lift our brownies out at the end. So you want a grease-proof paper, a baking parchment, um, which will help you, uh, that it will stop the brownies from sticking. You don't want anything um, that's, uh, that it's silicon bait, has silicon coat, so it really helps um, everything um, sort of not stick. I'm just using the base because this is a loose lace, loose base pan. Find out my width. So put that back in there. And whilst I've got that, I can use that to determine the other piece. There we go. If you don't use baking parchment, um, but baking parchment, or you've only got greaseproof paper, like the awful stuff that we know I used to use and I hated, um, you can use uh, a little bit of cake release um, as well that you want to. It stops it all sticking. Um, I did mean to get something out. And we're going to secure this in place just with a couple of little uh, wooden clothes pegs. Don't use plastic clothes pegs because you're going to put this in the oven. <laughs> but we're going to align one piece there and just to hold it in place, just peg it on one end. Oh, I'm just trying to remember where I put the camera. <laughs> uh, let's just bring that around a little bit and another on that side as well and the same again don't have to use clothes pegs you can just fold it over and, and, and the weight of the brownie will um, keep it in place I just find with this cake pan that I need a little bit because it's quite deep sided I need just that little bit of extra uh, support there so we've got our brownie tin, like you see, lined, um, and when this baked, we'll be able to use these to just lift out straight away. So we'll pop that to the side, and let's, okay, so I can now hold my chocolate butter mix, and that's probably a good gauge to say that's ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're literally just going to fold this all now. So, oh, two spatulas. <laughs> so with your chocolate mix, just pull in, get it all in. We want all of that in. This bit smells the best when you start adding the chocolate and the butter to the eggs and the sugar because it is just chocolate, butter, eggs and sugar. It smells amazing. Um, and start bringing that through there. So this is why it's really quick and easy to do. It's really just folding. And it's one, apart from the warming things, you can get the kids to do. I mean, it's, it's a great one to get them started with as well. Um, and it's got chocolate in, so it's great for everybody. <laughs> So once we have all folded our chocolate and our eggs and sugar together, as you can see, it's starting to be that really lovely, rich colour that we want for our brownies. Um, yeah. Next thing to go in is our flour and our cocoa powder. Um, now we're using a plain or all-purpose flour, it's 120 grams here. Just going to pop it straight in. 
Uh, we're not using a self-raising flour. Like I said, we don't want it cakey or we don't want too much rise on it. We want the, the eggs and the, just the, the warmth of the brownies to do the lifting because then when it settles, then we'll get that really nice fudgy mass as well. So this is just all purpose flour or plain flour here in the UK. And we're also then adding in 50 grams of cocoa powder. This is just regular unsweetened cocoa powder. Like I said, um, you know I really like the intense cocoa powder, the one that they use in with the with the Oreos. But I didn't want to go overload on this because um, you'd lose the, the Oreo taste and texture. So we're just going with regular cocoa powder and i say in the baking basics video we talk about the difference between this and drinking chocolate when you're buying you don't want drinking chocolate that has added sugar in it and added milk so it will change your base so that's those both in and then just gently we're going to fold that through we don't need to do anything else don't whiz this with your mixer if you're using a stand mixer or a handheld mixer because it will develop the gluten it'll over develop the gluten in the flour and again we'll get quite a you won't get a cakey brownie but you'll get quite a dense heavy brownie um, because it's overworked so just fold it through scrape the outside and fold into the middle let's get and then once you're there, just give it a quick whiz through. And that actually is your basic brownie, um, your basic brownie batter. And you can take that and then, and you can do whatever with it. You, if you just want to bake regular brownies, you can do that with these. Um, or you can, um, you can jazz it up like we're going to do. <laughs> so this is our brownie batter now there's two ways of doing it we could pour half of this in and then scatter over some oreo pieces and some raspberries and pour another half in um or we're going to do what i'm going to do and then we're going to break our oreos up into this first and then pour that in and then we'll just add our raspberries on there and, and sort of we'll do it in two layers so with the raspberries the reason i don't want to add the raspberries in is because they're soft fruit they're fresh raspberries they will they've got the potential to break up so we're going to do this in two stages so we'll just put the oreos into here now um and then we'll put the the raspberries in when we pop it into the pan let's just get rid of the hot <laughs> So at this point now, I am going to preheat my oven. So if you've been doing this at home, you'll have preheated your oven when you start. And that's 180 degrees C or 350 Fahrenheit. So come on. So that's just going to preheat by the time with that oven by the time we get there it will be ready for them to go in if you've got an oven that isn't a fan oven or circulating you're thinking um i've had a couple of questions about uh top and bottom that if you, you can heat top and bottom you want you want the temperature from both we don't just want to cook it from beneath because that will end up with overcooked bottoms and soggy tops and you're not going to get that crunchy crust of a brownie that we're looking for so if you've got to heat top and bottom you want both of those going if you've got a fan oven uh, or regular oven then that's fine as well so we're going to put those to one side here is our brownie mixture it does smell really really good <laughs> I had to, I, I decided actually, we spoke about last week, um, whether I, what time I would do it. I didn't, at the time we didn't know the football was going to be, uh, we I wasn't going to be clashing with the football this evening. Um, but I think we will probably go for about eight o'clock. Um, one, it means um, I can get finished with work uh, if anything overruns there. Also means I can have some tea before I stand in front of this and because otherwise I'd be straight in there <laughs> so it means I can have some tea now 
I've just noticed my vanilla extract on the side. This is my homemade one. The details are all finally up on the blog. Um, and you've also got the kitchen live that we did for these as well. This is the homemade vanilla extract. I haven't added any in. If you want to, you can add a teaspoon in. Um, and uh, I tend to do that when I'm adding the eggs and the, the sugars together, just as that liquid stage. So if you want to do that, add that there. I, I could add it now, but... I wish Canon would sort that out somehow, because it's really annoying. <laughs> so, our Oreos. And you can do this with your hands, really. You, 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 we're just going to break them up. Um, you don't want to go overboard at this point. Um, so let's break up about, because we're going to add them onto the top as well. So let's break up. This is a, there's 14 in a tube. I went a bit mad because they had two of these packs of double Oreos on offer for two pound and um, on the online shop. Sometimes Oreos can be really expensive. So I was like, oh, got to get some of them really quickly. Um, you could also, they, they work out quite expensive, use the mini Oreos as well um, and just chuck them in whole um, or use them from the top. So what have I got? I've got seven left there. I can smell them as well. I don't really want to eat one. So I've got seven whole ones here and I've just broken seven up into their big pieces. We're going to stud the top as well. So um, it's not too bad. Let's just give that a mix through. My trusty angle pipe knife. I knew there was something I forgot earlier. This um, but we're going to go in. So, in our lined baking tin then, we're going to pop half of this mixture in. So, in that. Oh, goes. Let's scrape it down. So, this is a 9 by 9 uh, loose base cake pan. Um, you can use a regular brownie pan, and 8 by 8 will give you really thick brownies. Now, remember, if you do use a smaller one, you will have to adjust your timing slightly um, because the, uh, the, the temperature and the thickness for it to cook through. So, I've put a layer in. I'm just using the spatula to eke that out all over. I'm just going to pop that on there. And then with our raspberries, so fresh raspberries here, like I said, I'm not using frozen ones because when I put frozen ones in, they're going to defrost and thaw out as they bake and they're going to go a bit soggy inside. You could use freeze dried ones, which would give you really intense. Uh, pockets of raspberry nuts, but you, you'll get them more, um, tend to be less whole raspberries, more pieces. So they, I don't like the texture of them when they're baked in. So for this fresh raspberries, um, and I'm just going to scatter some over because we're going to be putting some on the top as well. Obviously these are all clean. go make sure there's sort of raspberries in each area of the pan <laughs> save some for the top and then lastly again let's oh, go in with our remaining yeah. the, the top of and the microwave decided to have its own ideas today. So in that goes, get as much out as you can. <laughs> now you could also make these as little brownie cups. Um, I've been looking at doing mini or individual portions of things. Um, so you could do these in little cupcake pans or something like that. Uh, so you get, I'm just going to turn that so I can 
I'm going to get chocolate everywhere. Yes. <laughs> uh, so you can um, you could do individual portions as well. And what I do with those is um, put a brownie in the bottom of the cupcake pan, or if you're doing them in cupcake cases, and then uh, so you get a nice sort of Oreo. Did I say put the brownie or did I say put the Oreo? I put an Oreo in the bottom so you get a whole Oreo uh, there and then stud the top with the uh, raspberries. So let's just get rid of that for my chocolatey hands. There we go, just pop that peg back on. And then again with the spatula, just eke that out over. So you've got almost like a, an even layer there. Oh, it does smell so good. <laughs> uh, next up then, get your Oreos. Um, I'm gonna actually pop these in whole, um, which means I'm probably gonna have to open another packet because that's bad calculation on my part. Um, I'm going to try and do it. So everybody, I'm going to try and cut this into 12 pieces. So um, four, four by three. Um, so let's do that. And then in between those, we'll fill it in with the raspberries. So let's just get rid of that packet. Um, and here I've just realised I have the Oreo bites as well. You could pop them in the top as well, a bit like we do with the Kinder. Um, they're just going to get eaten instead. <laughs> um, the Kinder Bueno, we do the little Bueno pieces. So push them in, just give them a prod into the brownie batter because otherwise when they bake they'll lift up and if they've not just given a push in they, um, they'll they pop out when they bake and we want them, them in. So I've got 12 Oreos there and then 7 in. So it depends on how many you want to put piece wise into it, you could say 12 and put none in or just have them on the top. And then I'm going to go in now and just finish off with some more fresh raspberries on the top. And then I'll have the rest of these for my pudding. <laughs> so I don't feel so bad after I've just sat here waiting to eat brownies. <laughs> oh dear. I'm trying to be so good as well. If anybody's following me on Instagram or you'll, you'll, um, on the Facebook page, you'll see that I'm doing the Couch to 5K. And oh my word, it's the app and it's got Joe Wiley and she keeps telling me that I love running is the way forward. But I'm not sure, especially that she's told me I'm running for 20 minutes on Friday. <laughs> I think she's on a... She, her and I are on the same page. <laughs> right then, we have, I won't tip it up, but you might be able to see, we've got a studded brownie top with our Oreos and also the fresh raspberries in there. And I'm going to now pop this into the oven. I like to say, I'm going to pop it on a baking sheet, you don't need to, I've just had, um, had to clean the oven, so I'm gonna try and keep it clean a little bit longer. So let's pop these in. Oven is preheated to 180 degrees C, 350 Fahrenheit. And they are going to cook for about 30 to 35 minutes. Now, bake time on brownies is crucial. You might think that they're not done, and then they actually are. And if you leave them in for longer, they overbake and they get dry and dense and, and not that nice, fudgy center that we want. So pop them in the oven and actually go for 30 minutes on the timer. But when you're getting close to that 30 minutes, give them a test, take the skewer, 
a skewer or a cocktail stick or a bamboo skewer or something and go in, not in the set, so it's not like a cake, so we're not going to test the center because that center will still be gooey. What we want to do is want to test the edge about one inch in. And if that comes out clean, and um, it can come out clean with a few crumbs on it um, and a tiny bit of moisture, but if it's, if it's dry, then it's, it's definitely done. But if you test that and your skewer or your cocktail stick or whatever comes out clean, then that's fine. Trust me, if you test the center, it will come out and it'll still be wet and you'll think, these aren't ready yet. The thing is, what we're gonna do is when they're baked, we're gonna leave them uh, in the tin, take them out and leave them in the tin for a good 20 odd minutes, 15, 20 minutes to cool down. We're not gonna lift them out yet. We're just gonna leave them in the tin and actually a bit like when we're melting the chocolate and the butter where the residual heat from the butter melted the remaining chocolate, the residual heat that's in the pan and in the brownie is gonna finish cooking that out in the center. So you'll get that, that really nice uh, fudgy texture. If you want a denser, more cakey brownie, if that's your bag, then by all means, go a little bit longer. But I wouldn't bake it until that center is utterly perfect because it will be dry and it will be dense and it's really cakey um, and you won't get that nice sort of browniness through it. Take it to no more than 40 minutes. That is if that's what you're looking for. Like I say, if you want the perfect brownie, the secret is, take it to 30 minutes, see what's happened. And if you need to take it a little bit further, take it to 35 and probably no more, but test that one inch in from the edge rather than the center. Then once it's come out, like I say, you're gonna leave it to cool. So just leave it on a, a heat thing or somewhere in the pan. And then once that's happened, after 15, 20 minutes, then you can use the paper to lift it out and place it on a wire cooling rack. At that point, leave it. <laughs> Don't cut it still, it is still not ready to cut. Leave it for a good hour, if not longer. So what I tend to do with my brownies is if I'm making them in the morning, I won't cut them until the evening. If I'm making them now, these won't get cut or anything until tomorrow. Um, and then they won't fall apart because if you cut them when they're too warm still, they'll just fudgy melt away, which you may, what you're looking for. If you're looking for those really sharp, smooth edge cuts, pop it in the fridge for 15 minutes before you're ready to cut, and that chill will just help set everything. Won't change it at all, it just helps set a little bit so when you cut, it's fine and you can, um, you can get a nice slice on there. When they're cooked, they have got that fresh fruit in. Even though it's been baked, it's got fresh fruit in it and the raspberries on the top will still be there, um, still be fresh. So you want to keep them in an airtight sealed container and they are best eaten sort of on the day or the day after. If you are gonna only keep them for any longer than say three days, you've got fruit there and you don't want it to go moldy. So you can keep it in the fridge and then just warm it up if you want something, um, uh, if you want it a little bit softer um, for eating. But that's it. And th that, that is as simple as it is. One bowl within the hour, what are we at? Th 48 minutes, that's amazing. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly run down this and then we can, um, that's, that's half time in the football, so we're about the same. <laughs> Not that I'm into football. But this has been my Raspberry Oreo brownies edging you in to this week's uh, the start of Kitchen Live again. This one makes nine to 12 portions depending on what size tin you're using or, or how big a piece you make. Um, and that's that's thing. Thank you, Gina. Um, if you, if I, I think somebody said it was an uh, anniversary, if that's a happy anniversary for you today. It's also my mum's, I'm not allowed to say how old she is, but she's uh, today, um, which I can't wait to see her, hopefully at the weekend, um, there may be cake, <laughs> and it's my brother's birthday tomorrow, so everybody's celebrating at the moment, <laughs> they celebrate with raspberry Oreo brownies, 
<laughs> 19 years, I think murder is seven. Yeah, we are, we are nine years. We have to keep thinking about that. We are nine years this year um, in October. So um, next year is 10, but <laughs> we're still working from home together and I haven't murdered him yet, but I'd probably get less <laughs> than what I'm going through. <laughs> So these have been my raspberry Oreo brownies with this devilishly rich, my go-to brownie recipe. So like I said, you can take that base recipe and you can tweak it and make it your own. But we have stuffed it with raspberries and Oreo chunks and all sorts of good stuff. Um, and the best bit is that it is all in that one bowl. That one bowl that is there, and that's all the washing up I've got to do, apart from everything else that I've made. <laughs> that is with as well. But less than one hour to start to finish. And it's a great, easy recipe to get everybody involved in. I'm just going to run down the ingredients one more time, and I will be posting this all up. But we have used 200 grams of unsalted butter. You can use a slightly salted butter if you prefer. Uh, and we've used a dark chocolate as well. That's just the standard, regular supermarket chocolate. Uh, we've used a, I've got caster sugar here, but we've used a mixture of a dark muscovado and a caster sugar, 200 of the muscovado and 150 of the caster sugar, just to get that really nice caramel flavor, fudgy texture, really rich brownies, and four medium eggs. Key ingredient here is we've been using plain flour or, or, or all-purpose flour. There's no rising agent in here, no baking powder, no baking soda, no self-raising flour, just regular plain flour because that's what's going to give us the brownie texture. We don't want it to puff up and get cakey. And we've also topped up our chocolate with a little bit of cocoa powder, and that's just regular unsweetened cocoa powder. Um, then, of course, we've popped in some Oreo cookies. I've said 10 to 12 there because I've gone for 12 on the top, but then we've broken it up. So it's a it's a packet and a half. This is a double pack. Um, you can use Oreos or you can, I see a lot of the supermarkets now are doing their own version, so you can use those as well. And also we've used about 100 grams of raspberries and that's fresh raspberries for this, not frozen ones because we don't want to add any extra moisture into our brownie batter. Um, and you could use freeze dried ones if you prefer. I'm just not a fan of the texture of those in the brownies. Equipment wise, really, really simple. Your large bowl, handheld mixer or balloon whisk, some spoons, a spatula, a uh, palette knife, and also your brownie pan. And this has been done in a nine inch square cake pan. You can use a regular brownie pan, rectangular square as well. So that's your lot. I say I will get some pictures taken of these when they're out of the oven and they're all nicely cooled down tomorrow and I'll take some pictures and get the whole recipe up there but you can find everything you need here at the moment. Uh, let's just go to the thing. So thank you very much. This, I, I feel, is it the, was it the Muppets or somebody that had the little round thing, the man, 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 do, 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 type thing. I won't do that because I'll get, I'll get, a copyright notice or something for singing something. <laughs> I need to make sure that I'm in the right place, but because it's on the different side to what I normally I used to be, I now have to remember where I am. But thank you very much for watching next week's episode. We're going really simple again. I'm keeping these ones really nice and simple because we're building up the baking basic series over on YouTube. So next week we'll be We'll be going in with some Rocky Road and a bisque of Rocky Road, but we'll be talking about, we'll, we'll look a bit more about our ingredients next week um, and everything as well. And I will post up that uh, sort of within the next few days, but it will be the same time, 14th of July, uh, next Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. here. So there'll be no football by then as well. <laughs> But thank you so much for watching. If you are over on YouTube and you've enjoyed the live stream, then please do subscribe. Um, I'm here every Wednesday, posting every week as well. Um, if you're over on Facebook, you give me a follow. We, we have a little bit of fun over there. There's memes, there's all sorts of things. And there's always Kitchen Live on here. Um, but there's also weekly recipes, updates, tips, tricks, all sorts of things. So let me know. If you are on YouTube and you've liked it, please give me a thumbs up or a subscription and the notification bell. And um, 
yeah thanks for watching and i will see everybody soon and let's go and find out how we're doing in the football i don't dare to look <laughs> catch you soon bye for now